Hey everyone, it's Lydia Pros here from Fujifilm Australia. I'm one of the Fuji guys and I'm delighted to be here in Melbourne, Australia, uh, where it's sunny at the moment, but it could turn into rain. You never know in Melbourne weather. I'm at the Webb Bridge and I wanted to do a HDR shot using the new Fujifilm X-T2. This camera has been highly anticipated from a lot of X-T1 users, but something that I'm very excited about is the dynamic range in this camera. With the new sensor and the new processor, I really want to explore that. So I'm going to use exposure bracketing to actually capture my three exposures in one click on the shutter button, and I'll show you how to do that. And then we'll take it in software, so we can actually see the three different exposures showing the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And we're going to merge those images together to create a HDR image. So to start off with, I'm going to be using the 16 to 55 mm lens. It's a great lens. It's um, made in Japan, and I'm going to be shooting an aperture of 5.6. So I ideally, I want to be shooting aperture priority for this. So I'm going to set my shutter to automatic, and I'm going to set my exposure compensation to zero because at the moment I don't think I need to brighten or darken my shot. ISO I'm going to keep quite low to reduce any noise in the image. Um, when I merge the three photos together. And the most important setting of all is to turn the drive mode to bracketing. And to access your bracketing settings, you go into the menu and you simply go into the camera, drive setting, and here you can choose your bracketing settings. As I said before, you do have the exposure bracketing, auto exposure bracketing here, ISO bracketing, film simulation bracketing, and white balance bracketing. For this exercise, we're going to go auto exposure bracketing, and I'm actually going to do um, plus one, minus one. So what it's going to do is going to get the correct exposure and take one minus one and one plus one so I get the ideal result for the shadows and highlights. So now that I've got all those settings, all I need to do now is just compose my shot. But before I do that, actually, I'm going to go into Quick Menu and I'm going to set the film simulation here. I'm going to shoot Velvia. So it's really going to punch those colours and I'll show you in Lightroom just how you can get the best out of your Fujifilm camera when you're using your film simulation modes. So now all I need to do is just compose my image, okay, autofocus, and let me just get a bit more of that building in, okay, that's the shot. So now that we've taken the photo in RAW, I'm actually going to preview it, and you can see here that the first shot is at minus one. If I scroll to the left, the next shot is at plus one, and then I've got the perfect exposure here. When I bring this into the computer in Lightroom, you'll see those, and I'm just gonna go through the detail on how to retain all the, the color in the image as well. To adjust the colors now of the film simulation in Lightroom, we're just gonna scroll down to camera calibration right down the bottom of the actual develop panel, and you'll see the profile setting where you can change the camera to camera velvia or vivid. Now I'm going to rotate and just straighten it, and once I've done that, I'll press enter, And now I'm just going to copy these settings and apply them to the other photos. To do that, click Edit, go to Copy, and select Copy, and then paste those on the other photos. By edit, Paste, or Apple V. So the last photo, I'm just going to go Apple V and paste that. Now I'm going to select all my images, and I'm going to export those to Aurora HDR Pro using the File menu and going down to use TIFF with Lightroom adjusters. So this gives me a preview of what the HDR is going to look like. I just want to make sure the alignment and the ghost reduction is correct. So now I select those, click Create HDR, choose my brightest image, and then I will just want to make sure the ghost reduction is at the highest setting. This is then going to open an Aurora HDR Pro where then a preview of the HDR image or the final image will be created. Now along the bottom it does have some presets and I've made this one a little bit earlier. I'm just going to adjust the slider, the main slider down the bottom of the preview to reduce the amount of the HDR look. So it looks a little bit more natural. But you can tweak uh, the settings on the right hand side in the develop module. Once I'm happy with my image, I'm now going to go apply image and that's going to reopen the image in Lightroom, where you can see the great detail that you're getting from the Fujifilm X-T2. 
So Fujifilm fans, definitely you want to check out the X-T2. You've just seen how easy it is to actually record a HDR image from this and the dynamic range from this camera is simply incredible. If you've come from an X-Pro2, you're not going to be surprised with the image quality that comes with the same process and sensor on this camera. Now I did want to actually talk about one excellent feature on this camera and that's the 4K video. Will, my colleague, who's also a Fuji guy, is filming, is actually using the X-T2 to film 4K at 25 frames per second. So the image quality that you should be seeing is exceptional. Remember, when you do pick up an X-T2, try all the settings. Try HDR using the bracketing setting at the top of the camera and you'll be really surprised with the results that you get from it.